I don't have any slides and like my awesome colleagues shared. Um, I just wanted to kind of share a piece of experience that I have um, and I gained uh, during my time at, at AWS. Um, so regarding the um, whiteboarding, so it, it is important, first of all, to understand as a solutions architect, um, what is the purpose of, of whiteboarding? Why you are going on a customer site or um, you're scheduling call with your customer, having their time and um, doing this whiteboarding thing? Is it because you have lots of services you want to sell or is it because you actually want to understand what is your customer's pain point mm -hmm. and you're trying to help them to achieve the result they want to with the services that you currently have in the market? So the second mindset, of course, is, is the correct one. So once you um, go on the customer side, you start to you start your um, uh, you start to uh, whiteboard um, put putting things on the whiteboard. Um, the first very important point is to understand um, customers' compute storage um, archive options. For example, um, you can. Of course, you can start ask, asking customers that where their workload currently, mm -hmm. and like as a conversation layer, um, it will evolve through the conversation, and and you will be able to identify actually, for example, a customer doesn't need Elastic Compute Cloud. Let's say they 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 can go serverless, for example, or a customer doesn't need this. It might be helpful that even if you think that you know more about one specific topic or services, let's say Kubernetes, your your customer at that time may not need that. So when you're going on a whiteboarding, it's not about you showing your skills that we have services and I know specifically about this, like containers or something, something. Um, so first of all, identify the key points, what your customer is looking, and then try to understand um, where you can you can bring the services that will bring the most of the value. I will give you an example. So when I joined AWS during my three months of onboarding, I had a customer use case uh, where I need to build a solution and show as a proof of concept for the customer. Um, so during the whiteboarding, so my first mistake, so I'm, I like to be vulnerable um, here, especially live, so my first mistake is that when I did whiteboarding, I was just throwing all the services that we have. It was related to IoT use case. The customer wanted to um, wanted to count the number of people and measure the building occupancy. And I was like, great, like this is IoT, and I will I will learn the services we provide, um, all these like things, and I will just throw them on whiteboard and I will get the job done. But that wasn't the case because during the actually whiteboarding, um, I discovered that customer, for example, they already they, they know that what they want to do, but they don't know how it's going to look like with AWS. Right. And apparently we have so many options. So in, in my case, I used Raspberry Pi, which I published a blog post. And then during my um, research within the company externally as well, I found out that we actually have a service called um, IoT device, IoT device simulator. So basically, it is it's a it's a simulation where you can uh, put some um, points and it will simulate the actual data. So what type of data you want, you just put in that service and it will simulate every minute, every 30 seconds, no matter, you, you put the timeline as well and it will simulate the data nonstop. So for example, if your customer wants to, wants to have something similar, but you are not allowed to touch their data or to use their actual device and frugality comes in place that you don't, want or you are not allowed to buy the same device like the actual device your customer is using but you need to somehow produce the demo or proof of concept for your customer and show the benefits of cloud then you can go and find out different solutions for the data ingestion part for example in that case i use raspberry pi and iot device simulator so with device simulator for example i show the customer the value that you can you can go from zero, like even if you don't have a device, 
at the actual device. Even if you are kind of scared to buy hundreds of thousands of devices and then and then it, it's not exactly how you want to see in the cloud or the services are different or you don't want relational database, you want non-relational, but you're not sure how that specific non-relational database in the cloud would work. So you're kind of in the middle of um, uncertainty and you don't want to make decisions when you are not quite sure. So for that, um, again, yeah, I found the service that we have that you can simulate the data with Raspberry Pi, for example, which can also generate the data externally. And then I showed the value of um, value of um, AWS cloud services. And then I published that blog post um, in AWS blog channel. So the main point is that during whiteboarding is um, you need to really understand where your customer is coming from and what is the pain point. Is it the actual device that they don't know um, where to purchase, how to purchase, what is the best device out in the market? Um, you can you can give some um, kind of advice or you can give some information if you want to, like if you have some experience about the devices, but of course we're not forcing or we're not picking and choosing that, hey, this device is better than that. We, will, we just give the list of devices that we know um, that might be suitable for their use case. And it's up to the customer to choose which one they want. And then of course, with the cloud side of the things, the services, you are the one um, who will pick and choose which one will be um, applicable for the customers. So in this case, for example, if they have um, time stream data, we, we have a specific database for that. If, if the data will be um, non, non-structural, um, so it, they will probably use NoSQL database. So it is crucially important to understand um, the services that might be apl applicable for them and then work with them to uh, because sometimes customers can come to you and say, we want this. And then during the discovery and whiteboarding, you will figure out that it's not exactly what they want. Like, for example, customer might say, um, I had a use case with a customer where they were saying, um, yes, we have like different IoT devices. We have a LoRaWAN gateway. Uh, we have already API gateway, um, which we are connecting. And then we have, um, some SQL database where we are storing all this data, et cetera, et cetera. And then during the discovery, I said, why not to put all your data, not there, but somewhere else uh, in the cloud where it will be cost effective. And then you can actually archive your data. For example, like you, you don't need this data after a year, or if you need it, you will be able to retrieve it within 48 hours or 12 hours or three to five minutes. It depends on, on the tier of archival system as well. And, and with that, you can save your cost. So customer wasn't aware about that, for example. And they were thinking that if it's a relational database, it's a relational data, it needs to be in a relational database or vice versa, or how it will work in general in the cloud. So they were not aware. You as a solutions architect, it's your kind of responsibility during this discovery and whiteboarding to understand maybe it's not a pain point right it wasn't my customer's pain point they just wanted to see how LoRaWAN gateway and other iot devices would be able to connect with aws and they wanted to see dashboarding in near real time in the cloud so their kind of use case the scenario was that like pretty straightforward right you just take the LoRaWAN and then you connect to um, aws but during the discovery and whiteboarding and throwing some ideas, asking the customer, okay, do you really want that um, like database to use that? Um, like, what are the restrictions? How many users will be using it? And then you kind of scope it down and see the actual, actually a customer probably don't know that they can actually use um, like a data lake in AWS. B, um, they might have not seen even, so they're, uncertain about that, how it's going to work, what, how the data will look like in Amazon S3, simple storage service. Um, so, so I took that use case with the customer. I said, okay, I will build it. I will show you. And it's up to you. If you, if you want to take it, I will be happy to guide you along the way. If not, 
uh, at least they are aware and they they show it and we can probably show it to other customers who might um, who might get benefited from from the proof proof of concept. Um, so yeah, my main takeaway how to take it from whiteboarding to proof of concept is thoroughly investigate your customers' needs, even if they don't know what they need. Sometimes, I would say most of the time, it's the case. Um, they just come and say, okay, I have a problem. I just need a solution, right? Some C-level people, they might say that, okay, just bring me a solution. Bring me how, how I'm going to solve it um, in real time. I want to see the data, the dashboards um, without asking, hey, give me access, without asking developers doing this and that. So they, they want um, easily accessible and securely accessible data in the cloud. But then you need to understand, is it really what they need? Is it really going to help them with their current problem or do you are you thinking in the long term? Once you identify your problem and your customer's um, your customer's idea, the scenario, you will be able to give the confidence to the customer where a customer will say, that sounds like a plan. Um, I'd like to see a proof of concept. I'd like to see a demo. So solutions architects, when we are building a demo, it doesn't cost anything to the customers, right? They we, we take it, we build it. Of course, we're not touching customers' data. As my um, colleague Chris mentioned, that we, we are not using any customer-related data in our environment. We're not allowed to. Uh, we might replicate the same thing, what customer is telling us. For example, if they have a LoRaWAN, if they're using a LoRaWAN gateway, if they're using a specific um, devices, um, we can use it like not from the customer, but we can have our own, we can order it externally, pay for it. Or if we have colleagues who already done that, we can ask to reuse those resources and then build a proof of concept and then show the customer, look, this is a LoRaWAN gateway. This is, this is the device and this is the cloud part of the things. This is how it looks like. And then and then other parts of discussion can happen. Okay, you did with one LoRaWAN, right? How about if I have like thousands and millions of devices, how I'm going to connect to AWS? Do you have any services for that? Um, do I need to do something? And, and then once you show that, okay, you can do in, in larger scale as well, they might get interested that they, they actually um, want to like have a workshop or play around. Can you show us? Can you help us how to do that? And then you can schedule a workshop. You can you can um, guide the customer during the workshop. And then it's up to them. If they want to implement, they can either call ProServe, um, like James, uh, who will be able to uh, build, the, build the same thing. Sometimes we solutions architects, we just give the um, the build that we built already to uh, ProServe, but sometimes they um, they might add or remove some of the things that we did uh, during POC. So the, the actual build fits the customer's requirement 100%. Again, in my use case at the beginning, um, customers, they, they didn't know if they're going to buy specific external IoT devices. They wanted to see something like that and how it connects to the to the cloud. I use Raspberry Pi, and Raspberry Pi is not production ready thing, right? So even if I take the build and give it to to ProServe, they will have to figure out the data ingestion part, how the customer's device will be connected to to the cloud, and what are the uh, pain points like the security part, and in which country it's located, and all these details. Um, so this is kind of my um, takeaway and ideas around um, whiteboarding and um, how to take from whiteboarding to proof of concept. And of course, proof of concept is not just you showed it to one customer, then great, um, then you, you keep forgetting it. So what I really like in AWS, what we do, uh, once we build something, um, some of the builders, they, they publish it in AWS samples um, GitHub repo where um, some of the other builders from other companies, they can reuse the same build. Sometimes I, when I need some sort of a demo, I go to AWS samples and just deploy 
the build in my environment, safe environment, just to play around and see how it looks like and how it works. Sometimes uh, when we build a demo, uh, we record it um, internally and we share with people, with other builders, and um, so we can reuse the assets over and over again. And also we have um, on YouTube, we have um, AWS Tech Talk. And I most of the time when I need something like recently, I was building a demo using Amazon Connect, uh, which is a, a contact center service. And although internally, yes, we had like lots of resources. You can simply Google um, Amazon Connect. You will see snippets of code in the documentation, et cetera, et cetera. But it wasn't enough for my case. Um, and because whiteboarding has been already done by someone else and I've been asked to build already a demo, um, I had several questions. And you sometimes you don't have time to go and bother other person asking some of the like details of the questions. Um, so your demo would fit or not. So for that, um, I just um, Googled it, of course. I went to YouTube and I found this AWS Tech Talk channel, which was really cool because it's uh, most of the contents are presented by AWS Solutions Architect, or at least the ones that I watched. They were mainly from AWS Solutions Architect. And um, they're presenting a presentation, kind of giving a high overview, and then they're showing live demo, um, how they built it. It's really cool. I really enjoy enjoy it. And another advantage of being in AWS, I, I can look at the person's name and just reach out internally and say, hey, I just watched your video and I really loved it. I built the demo based on your tutorial, which was really awesome. And um, if you have some additions, like if we have a new product feature, et cetera, you can, of course, um, request internally that um, this thing needs to be changed or needs to be added. It is also possible. So this was my um, um, two cents and um, my point.